Welcome. These three plants, these three cacti, belong to the same species. They are all Lophophora williamsi. Two of them are in bloom, and the third one, I hope, will bloom this year later on, because they, they not only bloom once, they keep blooming throughout the season, but these flowers are the first ones to open this year. The one on the left, this one, the plant on the left, the flower on the left, opened three days ago for the first time, and these flowers are opening and closing, opening in the late morning and close in the afternoon, and they are open only when their pollinators are active. So this plant has been opened already for the third time, and I think it will be its last day. It didn't open fully, it didn't open as widely as, is, as it was open yesterday. However, this one is fully open and it's ready for an insect to pollinate it. Uh, I will not wait for insects to pollinate these, uh, these two flowers. I will cross-pollinate them myself using a, a, just a paintbrush and I will transfer the pollen from one plant to the other and back. And I will try to uh, harvest the seeds for the first time and I will try to plant them. We'll see how it works. It will be my first attempt to grow Lophophora williamsi from seeds. Uh, if you look at the middle flower, this one, you can see that it bears quite large scars near its bottom. The, the, the damage was done about three years ago by a bird when the, when the plant was much smaller than it is now, to the point that I was very worried if the plant would survive at all. And then I bought, when I had the opportunity to do so, I bought two more just in case. Lophophora williamsi doesn't have spines, so it is not protected from birds or rodents, just like spiny prickly cacti are. There is quite a lot of water trapped in the body of, the, of these plants, so in a desert, when water is scarce, there are animals that might be tempted to steal it. However, Lophophora williamsi is highly toxic to the animals, and that's probably why it is left uh, alone and it is not being consumed by birds, lizards, or rodents on a desert. However, uh, it is not toxic to humans. On the contrary, it has hallucinogenic properties. So these properties is what is making these plants endangered species an endangered species there are very few habitats where where these plants are growing still undisturbed by by people who are harvesting them exactly because of their uh, hallucinogenic properties these plants just like other cacti in my collection are kept outside during the growing season and then I take them back home to protect them for the harsh winter outside, but at the same time I let them stay in the basement when temperatures are uh, about 10 degrees Celsius, and I don't water them at all during that time. So they go through a dormancy period which lasts from October till May, depending on the year, just like this year, for example, I had to keep them inside till mid-May because there was a danger of frost. The nights till mid-May were still occasionally very frosty. And even yesterday, it's the 30th of May, it was snowing here. The temperature was above zero, however, there was quite a lot of snow falling and then it changed into rain, so I had to take these plants inside just for the, for the duration of the rain because cold is not really something that will make these plants unhappy or die. However, wet, 
cold is something that is very dangerous for them. Thank you very much for watching my video about my Lofofora Williamsi. I hope you like them as much as I do. I like them a lot and the fact that they are very rare and interesting plants is something that makes me really happy to have them. Have a great day.